when you look at what's happened over the last couple of weeks, I don't know whether you're looking at a, a recession. We were speaking to Mervyn King yesterday, who were few, you know who said this is the wrong kind of language. We need to look at a temporary halt in the economy, and whether you think it, it will get better with time, or actually, unless monetary stimulus comes on in full force, it'll turn ugly. Yeah, well, I don't want to disagree with Mervyn King, particularly about use of language, where he's an expert. But nonetheless, there is a technical definition of a recession of two quarters of falling output. And I do fear that that is where we are headed. Certainly, the first quarter, um, I think, is going, to be, is going to be very difficult. But I think he's right that it isn't a conventional recession, which typically arises either because of over-indebtedness or over-enthusiasm in financial markets, where there's a a correction. Uh, we're not in that position. It's largely a supply side shock. But nonetheless, it's going quickly to have financial consequences. Here at the moment, I've got to say we're, from a bank perspective, in a sort of phony war where we, you know, we expect the invaders to arrive, but they haven't quite turned up yet. Because, of course, just at the moment, the economy, as of two or three days ago, was fine. So we are gearing up for a wave of requests for financial uh, support and forbearance of various kinds, but it, it hasn't crashed over us yet. Um, Sir Howard, what is the weak link in the economy right now? So we have a lot of countries saying they will try and support small and medium-sized enterprises. Germany today saying they will let banks tap capital buffer to weather the fallout from the virus. Is, is there a worry about liquidity? Is there something that you look at saying, you know, policymakers and governments mm. are just not doing enough on? Until yesterday, my answer to you would have been the commercial paper market, which by the end of last week was seriously broken. And that has been corrected by both the Fed and the Bank of England saying that they will buy commercial paper. Now, apart from that, I think where you've got to look for worries is non-bank credit, as we know, because of the squeeze on banks with the additional capital banks have had to have, the growth in credit has been typically in the non-bank sector. I mean, some of the neo-banks, if you like, peer-to-peer uh, -peer lenders, money market funds in the US, that's an area where I think we have to look rather carefully, because although the banks we know are very strongly capitalized, uh, in some cases there, outside the banking system, there could be difficulties. So that, that's an area I'd be concerned about at the moment. Uh, and then I would say... It is going to be just a spending gap where a lot of people get laid off quite quickly. And then you will discover in the famous Warren Buffett phrase, you know, only when the tide goes out, you discover who's been swimming naked. And we will find out whether there are companies who have been running with very small financial cushions. Uh, at the moment, I don't see a straightforward liquidity problem in the sense that the banks can extend credit. The difficulty, of course, we'll have is whether we're extending credit to people who are illiquid but fundamentally viable companies, or whether there are companies out there who are actually going to be insolvent as a result of the slightest downturn. And, you know, there will be some bankruptcies, I'm quite sure. Sir Howard, it's interesting that we get the shock and awe yesterday in the U.S. about a $1.2 yeah. trillion dollar stimulus package, and yet futures down this morning 4 5% here in the U.S. Is it not enough? Do we need more? Do we need more coordination globally? There are two or three different answers to that, I think. I mean, overall, if you ask me, is it enough? My own hunch is that it isn't, because I think that the consequences for spending are going to be greater and therefore our governments are saying this may not be the end we may need to do a lot more and i think they're very wise to do that and so i think that's something but i'm sure that we will have higher financial consequences for governments coordinate i think particularly there's a problem in the eurozone where we are seeing spreads widening in the eurozone and some countries getting into much more difficulty than others. That is a tension that I think people need to watch very carefully. What is most effective? As you dive into the details, that's, as they say, the devil is in the details there. You have thoughts of sending out a $1,000 check, payroll tax, bailing out the airlines. What is the most effective form of stimulus? Well, I think it does depend from place to place. I think if you're talking about companies, then I think that uh, debt holidays, if you like, it's probably 
the most important thing, and indeed also tax holidays. Uh, we have here very large tax payments due at the end of this quarter, and the government haven't yet done this, but I suspect that they may be looking now at whether they should extend payment dates for those taxes to give people more liquidity. For individuals, I think the problem is going to be to identify those people whose earnings will fall very sharply and where there may be a gap before the benefit system kicks in. I mean, here, as in most developed countries, we have a benefit system which ought to kick in, but we know there are dangerous lags in it. And in those circumstances, we could have a situation where spending falls very sharply in the short term because the benefit system can't catch up. Now, in the US, I can see that given the benefit system is much less well developed, maybe you do have to go in for the blunt instrument of just giving people cash. Here, I think what we should be doing is working on making sure that the benefit system kicks into action extremely rapidly.